just wanted to quickly uh, go through ND filters quickly and show three different types of ND filter. Uh, that's these neutral density filters. And I want to show it uh, basically on the 600D here, which I'm filming on. I've got one of the ND filters, a net variable ND on the camera. And again, we might remember the way, the point of all of this was to try and get um, a wide aperture shot that's a lot of light in to allow this narrow depth of field. So I should be in focus there and the background should be out of focus. And I can do that because I'm using an ND filter on the front of the uh, lens. So I'm going to quickly show you the three types um, and you can have a look yourself, see what, see what you think of them. But um, three different, three different uh, types of ND filter ready for the same job and the same end result. So the first one I've got on is a variable ND filter. This is a Lightcraft, Lightworks um, ND variable ND filter. I bought this because it's a, a mid-range. It's not so cheap. Um, you can get them uh, about a 70 to 100 pound, I think, uh, depending on the size of the lens. And I got this particular one on this. Uh, um, this one is a 72 millimeter uh, ND variable ND filter. And the reason I got that was basically because it will fit my 72 millimeter filter size uh, lens, my 50 millimeter 1.2. Canon lens. So I bought it for that reason. But I want to be able to use it on other lenses, so I'm using it now on the 50mm 1.8 lens, the Canon 50mm, which is that great lens. And as a result, rather than buy another filter, variable ND filter, all, I did, all I've got is a step down ring from 72 to um, 52mm um, step down ring, so it allows me to use it on both lenses. So that's that. I'm also going to have a look at these uh, other two options as well. Uh, the variable NDs tend to be the most expensive, the one on the camera. I'm going to have a look at this uh, one option, which is probably the cheapest, is just a fixed ND filter. This is a Kud mid-range one for the Canon. You get them in different um, strengths. That's an ND4, an ND8, and I've got an ND16 here. And then finally, we're going to have a look at uh, these ones. These are the flat, these are resin ones. And uh, these are actually uh, very... Um, yeah, these are good quality ones, not the most expensive, but fairly good quality. And these um, are quite large, 100 mil, I think, and they'll fit over pretty well any lens. And for that reason, you have a special mount for them, and you can fit more than one of them. They come in different strengths too. And again, you can fit for different types of size of lenses, different um, adapter uh, things for that. So we'll have a quick look at fitting the three of them, and you'll see the effect, though, is pretty well the same. So the variable ND filter there, if I just check the exposure again, there, that's on, you can see it's slightly overexposed, I've got the filter on now. And I'll just by moving it around, you can see I can let, let, more, let more light in or turning it the other way. I can reduce the amount of light coming in, you can see there just by turning it around. So it's pretty well the exact amount I want in. There, you can see there. So I'll stand in the picture now just to show you that works. So you can see there, um, hopefully that I'm uh, in focus in the area behind me. That's using the variable ND one. So it's handy because you can actually on the fly change the amount of light coming in just by rotating it. I'm going to use this time the Kud, um, these, these Kud fix filters. You can get them in different brands. Kud's a good mid-level one, a Japanese made, I think, and a pretty good quality. So this is a Kud ND16. I think that gives three stops of, um, of darkening. So if I put that now over the lens, And I refocus again. You can still, well, we're nearly there. We've got, uh, it says here now we're two stops overexposed. So I'm going to put the, another filter on. This is the Kud um, ND4. And that should give me uh, probably another stop or so. I've got an ND8 actually. If this doesn't work, let me just put it over the lens. Yeah, that looks about right. So that's going to give me the right exposure there. So. ND4 now on top, so I'm putting one on top of the other now. I'm going to put one on top of the other. And I'm just going to refocus again because it, as I say, it does all of the focus there. You don't keep checking that. So that's there. Because the back is a bit brighter, it's a bit underexposed probably at the front. So I could even probably take off the other cues to leave a little bit more light on the scene. And again, I'll just refocus in because again, you lose by messing around with the front of the lens and turning it put these filters on you lose the focus. So that's using the um, 
code there, fixed uh, filters, ND filters. So finally, um, so finally just to use a third type, which are these square, these are resin type filters, and these are a brand called uh, High Tech. So they're a pretty good brand. They're not highest quality, but they're pretty good mid to better quality. Um, and for these, uh, the reason they're pretty good, you can use them in uh, DSLR rigs, and they can slide in to the area in, in, normally uh, in front of the barn doors. So they use kind of more commercial type shoots, I guess. And um, where you would connect these to a camera like this now without a rig is one of these adapters here. And um, you can buy different size adapter rings. This is for the 52 millimeter Canon, uh, the 50 millimeter Canon 1.8 lens, which has got a 52 millimeter ring. So simply this, uh, this slots in to the back. Here, then you put that on the camera. Filters. So we'll start. This is a. This is a. Let's put in a 1.2. And as you slide that in there, you see it lowers the exposure immediately. Yeah. So with those, it's much more manual effort there to keep changing that. And I'm going to just refocus again. Just make sure it's in focus. So that's using the uh, high tech. Uh, those square type filters. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful.